Hello everyone. Today in the subject of medical microbiology, we are going to study about bacteria. So the main objective is to give, give you a brief introduction about Vibrio and uh, the disease it, it caused and what is the mode of transmission, prevention and control of the diseases caused by the Vibrio bacteria. So, Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera is a gram-negative curved bacteria, a positive for oxidase, it uh, produces oxidase, uh, grows in alkaline media, facultative anaerobe, can undergo respiratory and fermentative metabolism also. So basically it is a, a bacteria that does not require oxygen for its survival and it is very uh, anaerobic in nature. And here you can see that it has a flagellum, a flagella for its movement also, and uh, got some pili also on its structure. So external structure is quite different from other coca, uh, coca bacteria and other uh, spirochetes. So this is a real uh, image of a microscope that is displaying with you. Uh, Vibrio uh, in the image. Vibrio is the genus of gram negative bacteria possessing a curved rod or comma shaped. Right? Uh, several species of which can only uh, cause a food borne infection. So, um, most probably they are well known for causing food borne infection or food borne illnesses in humans usually associated with eating of uh, un undercooked seafood. So the uh, especially in the regions where seafood is consumed a lot and it is not cooked up properly. So there you can see uh, the effects of uh, this Vibrio very much. So whenever you are eating uh, seafood and where, whenever you are dealing with uh, all uh, such scenarios, you must deal them with extreme care and extreme caution. Typically found in salt water, Vibrio species are facultative anaerobe. So they are uh, marine in nature, okay, uh, they are found in ocean water or salt water, Vibrio species are facultatively anaerobes, so they do not require oxygen for their metabolism that test positive for oxidase and do not form spores. So spore formation is not at all uh, nature of uh, these Vibrio species. All members of the genus are motile, right? All members are very much motile, right? And they can readily move from one place to another with the help of flagellum. They are able to have polar or lateral flagellum uh, with or without sheets. So uh, they do have sometimes polar flagellum or sometimes lateral flagellum. And they can uh, be with sheets or without sheets, depending on the nature. And they are readily able to move from one place to another because of the flagellum. Vibrio species typically possess two chromosomes which are uh, which is unusual for bacteria so uh, when it comes to its uh, genetic structure it has its own uh, two sets of chromosome each chromosome has a distinct uh, and independent origin of replication and are conserved together over time in the genes so each chromosome has its own distinct distinct independent characteristic and uh, usually it is conserved together over time in the genes. Recently, uh, phylogenesis uh, have been constructed uh, based on a suit of genes, multilocus uh, multi sequence analysis. O.F. Mueller uh, described eight species of the genus Vibrio, including in in Fostria, three of which uh, were spi uh, spiral forms. Some of 
Uh, the other species are today assigned to eukaryote taxa. For example, to euglenoid, uh, uh, per, uh, pernemia, or diatom bacilleria. However, Vibrio Mueller uh, in 1773 became regarded as the name of a zoological genus uh, and the name of the bacteria genus became uh, genus became Vibrio uh, Pixini in 1854. Filippo Pixini isolated a uh, microorganism he called Vibrios from cholera patients in 1854 because of their mortality. Latin uh, word Vibrio means to quiver. So, so and the real meaning of Vibrio is to quiver. Vibrios are curved gram negative rods and commonly found in trout water that we already know. Uh, the cell may be linked end to end forming S shaped or spiral. So they are particularly known to form S shaped and they are uh, sometimes linked together with each other. Uh, they are highly motile with sing, uh, single polar flagellum, non spore forming oxidase positive, and can grow under aerobic and anaerobic conditions. The cell envelope structure is similar to that of gram negative bacteria. So in morphology and anatomy, they are very much pretty much similar to the gram negative bacteria. Vibrio cholera is the prototype cause of water loss uh, diarrhea called cholera. So the disease they call uh, cause is called cholera. Growth and structure. Vibrio cholera uh, has a low tolerance for acid, but grows under alkaline pH. That is uh, pH 8 to 9.5 conditions that inhibit uh, many other gram negative bacteria. So, uh, uh, this, uh, this is a very indifferent characteristic of Vibrio cholera. It is distinguished from other Vibrios by its biochemical reactions. Lipopolysaccharide or LPS or, or O antigenic structure and production of cholera toxin CT. There are over 150 O antigen serotypes, only two of which uh, O12 and O139 cause cholera. So, Vibrio cholera infection uh, in brain, sciences, air, air, uh, lymph nodes, lungs, spleen, bone marrow, stomach, veins, pancreas, urinary bladder, intestine, skeleton, kidneys, gallbladder, liver, skin, muscles, arteries, heart, larynx, pharynx. Uh, so everywhere it can cause infections in humans. So human infection uh, caused by Vibrio species, like Vibrio cholera uh, disease, it causes known as diarrhea. Vibrio, uh, Vibrio parahemolyticus causes gastrointestinus and wound infection. Vibrio vulnificus causes gas gastroenteritis and wounds infection. Vibrio halsi causes gastroenteritis and wound infection. Uh, Vibrio mimicus causes gastroenteritis and wound infection. Uh, Vibrio maschi, um, maschi or COVID bacteria causes bacterinema, vibrio algino lyticus causes wound infection and uh, otis externa. An oven variant vibrio cholera or biogroup EI or TOR is distinguished by its biochemical reaction. O139 strains resemble to O1 EI tall strains but possess a unique O antigen and have a polysaccharide capsule. Vibrio cholera possess long filamentous villi that form bundles on the bacterial surface and belong to a family 
of pili whose chemical structure is similar to those of gonococcus and number of other bacterial pathogens all strains are capable of causing cholera uh, produce a colonizing factor known as a uh, toxin or co-regulated pilus or tcp because its expression is regulated together with ct so cholera symptoms cholera symptoms include sunken eyes cyanosis in and dry mouth casual uh, breathing blood pressure drop due to dehydration diarrhea vomiting of clear fluid muscle cramps and weakness so these are some common signs and symptoms of cholera pathogens pathogenesis to produce disease vibrio cholera uh, must reach the small intestine in sufficient numbers to multiply and colonize in healthy people ingestion of large numbers of bacteria is required to offset the acid barrier of stomach colonization of entirely intestinal tract from the uh, jejunum to the colon, uh, colon by vibrio cholera requires organisms adherence to the epithelial surface most probably by uh, surface pili so host uh, shrimp crab lobster amongst other animal genetic animal immune uh, response and immune nutrition so non infectious disease also it can be turned into infectious disease and obligate pathogen and probiotic strains of various species are also there and environment uh, rearing water aqu aqua feed digestive tract biosecurity microorganism pathogens pathogen strains of various species outstanding feature of vibrio cholera or pathogenicity is the ability of virulent strains to secrete ct which is responsible for the disease cholera the water and electrolyte shift uh, from the cell to the intestinal lumen is the fundamental cause of the watery diarrhea and cholera so here you can see the vibrio cholera curvature promotes uh, gel mortality and pathogenesis this is how it uh, move from liquid to gel so pre plasmic polymer uh, shows cell growth locally asymmetric growth derives uh, according to the curvature so its movement along the curvature helps it to get embedded into gel like substances from liquid so here you can see how uh, it uh, establish itself proximal bile lumen mucus layer initial colonization uh, from steps of a b c d e so here um, uh, it moves from lumen to the mucus membrane and try to invade uh, the ct and it establish itself then decimation and excretion then it uh, try to escape out again then again it invades inside the mucus layer decimation is, is and excretion distal bicarbonates so biofilm uh, in this image you can see biofilm allows bacteria to survive in nutrient poor and stressful environment that is low ph and high temperature but uh, biofilm and lifestyle are interchangeable vibrio cholera switches between a biofilm that is non motile in nature and uh, plan uh planktonic uh, motile state mediated by secondary messenger molecule uh, within the gut vibrio cholera can start a, mo a motile lifestyle to invade the host gut mucosa so a toxin uh, co-regulated uh, pilus tcp promotes uh, vibrio cholera microcolony formation uh, which is essential for colonization so here you can see the cholera toxin or ct releases in, into intestinal epithelial cell increasing uh, chloride ion is excretion increasing lumen uh, luminal ion concentration and leads to increase in water excretion results in watery diarrhea so a cholera toxin is the main thing that is essentially 
रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कॉजिंग डायरिया पैथोजेनिक स्ट्रेन सबल स्पीशीज ऑफ विब्रियोज आर पैथोजें मोस्ट डिजीज कॉजिंग स्ट्रेन आर एसोसिएटेड विद गैस्ट्रो एंट्राइटिस बट कैन ऑल्सो इन्फेक्ट ओपन वूम्स एंड कॉज सेप्सिस दे कैन बी कैरीड बाई न्यूमरस मेरीन एनिमल्स सच एज क्रैब्स और पॉम्स एंड हैव बीन नोन टू कॉज फेटल इन्फेक्शन इन ह्यूम्स ड्यूरिंग द एक्सपोजर risk of clinical disease and death increases when certain factors such as uncontrolled diabetes elevated iron levels and uh, cancer or other immunocompromised states are there pathogenic vibrio species include vibrio cholera vibrio para hemolyticus and vibrio vulnificus vibrio cholera is generally transmitted by contaminated water pathogenic vibrio species uh, can cause a food borne illness infection usually associated with eating of undercooked seafood <clears throat> so there are two ways of uh, uh, spreading or transmitting of cholera uh, first is contaminated water second is undercooked seafood so these are the two sources of uh, cholera when ingested vibrio cholera bacteria can primarily result in watery diarrhea along with uh, other secondary symptoms pathogenic features uh, can be linked to uh, quorum senses uh, where bacteria are able to express their virulence factor via their signaling molecule vibrio vulnificus outbreaks commonly occur in warm, warmer climate and small generally lethal outbreaks occur regularly an outbreak occur in new ornel ornels after hurricane katrina and several lethal cases uh, occur most years in florida as of 2013 in united states vibrio infection as a whole over up up to 40, uh, 43% when compared to uh, the rates observed in 2006 and 2008 vibrio vulnificus the most uh, severe strain has not increased food borne uh, vibrio infections are most often associated with eating raw shellfish vibrio uh, parahemolyticus uh, is also associated with uh, kan- uh, kanagawa a phenomenon which is uh, in which strains isolated from human host uh, especially the clinical isolates are hemolytic on blood agar plates while those isolated from non human sources are not hemolytic many vibrio species are also uh, zoonotic they cause diseases in fish and shellfish and are common uh, cause of mortality among domestic marine life epidemiology epidemic cholera uh, is spread primarily by contaminated water under conditions of poor sanitation particularly where sewage treatment is absent or defective even though uh, convalescent human carriage is brief if numerous numerous vibrios first uh, from the intestine uh, in case of cases are able to reach the primary water supply the conditions uh, for spread are established the short incubation period of 2 days ensures that organism is ingested by others quickly enter the epidemic cycle even so modern travel makes imported uh, cases possible one man a uh, man developed diarrhea in florida after eating chief marinated and cooked feed uh, fish just before departure uh, from an airport in ecuador cholera is uh, endemic in the indian subcontinent and africa over past two centuries it spread uh, beyond this historic uh, locate to other parts of asia indonesia and europe and has been described in eight pandemics 
each lasting for 5 to 25 years. The current pandemic has brought cholera uh, to the Western Hemisphere uh, for the first time since 1911. Sporadic cases in the United States first appeared in early 1970s and were traced uh, to inadequately uh, cooked crabs and shrimps caught off in the Gulf Coast of Louisiana and Texas. In 1991, Latin America was hit by uh, epidemic uh, with cases reported from 21 countries from Peru to North Me Mexico. In Peru alone, over 500,000 cases and uh, 4,500 deaths uh, occurred in the time span of two years. The disease is now uh, endemic, claiming thousands of lives every year. Virulent Vibrio cholera now lurks in coastal waters throughout the hemisphere and uh, in the drinking waters of the local with poor sanitation. The dormant strains of the uh, 20th century was the E.I. Thor biotype, first isolated from Maca pilgrims at E.I. Thor quarantine camp in 1905. This strain uh, survives slightly longer in nature and is more likely to produce subclinical uh, causes of cholera both of which facilitated its spread. In 1992, the first cholera case uh, due to a serotype other than O1 were detected in India and Bangladesh. The new serotype O139 Bengal uh, is fully virulent uh, with the additional threat of enhanced stability to produce diseases in persons whose immunity is due to exposure to the old serotype. This development is important for the global spread of cholera and for the vaccine strategies designed to prevent it. Triggering of epidemics and uh, inter-epidemic survival of Vibrio cholera uh, in the environment is incompletely understood, but may be linked with crustaceans and the plankton population. Vibrio cholera is a dormant state, can be demonstrated by immunofluorescence in plankton. The epidemics follow plankton blossom, plankton blooms. Otherwise, the organism is fragile, surviving only a few days in the environment unless maintained longer in marine and freshwater crustaceans. Fluid loss. The fluid loss uh, that results in the uh, adenylate cyclase simulation, uh, simulation of cells depends on the balance between the amount of bacterial growth, toxin production, fluid secretion, and fluid absorption in the entire gastri uh, gastrointestinal tract. The outpouring of fluid and electrolytes is the greatest in the small intestine where the uh, secretory capacity is high and absorptive capacity is low. The diarrheal fluid uh, can amount to many liters per day with approximately the same sodium content as plasma uh, with two to five times the potassium and bicarbonate concentration. The result is dehydration, isochronic fluid loss, hypo, uh, hypoalemia, potassium loss, and metabolic acidosis, bicarbonate loss. The intestinal uh, mucosa remains unaltered uh, ex except for some hyperemia because Vibrio cholera does not invade or otherwise injure the enterocyte. Mutants lacking CT or cholera toxin may still cause mild diarrhea due to recently discovered accessory toxins uh, which cause fluid secretion or increase intestinal permeability. Genetic regulations of virulence. 
the expression of the multi uh, multiple virulence factors of vibrio cholera is controlled in a complex but coordinated system involving environmental sensors and as many as 20 chromosomal genes divided between pathogenicity uh, is and PAI containing CT and one containing TCP. The chief regulator is transmembrane protein that senses environmental change in pH, osmolarity and temperature uh, which converted to an active form. In the active state, our tox R or transmembrane protein can directly turn into CT genes or cholera toxin genes as well as uh, activate transcription of a second regulatory protein. Tox T can uh, then activate transcriptional virulence genes in both uh, PAIs including uh, TCP and CT and accessory toxins. Coming on to the immunity, non-specific defenses such as gastric acidity, gut mobility, and intestinal mucus are important in preventing colonization with Vibrio cholera. For example, in person, for persons who lack gastric acidity, uh, the attack rate of clinical cholera is higher. Natural infection provides long-lasting immunity. The immune state has been associated with IgG directed against the cell walls with LPS and with the production of secretory IgA by lymphocytes in uh, sub-epithelial areas of gastrointestinal tract. The precise uh, protective mechanism remains to be established. Manifestations Typical cholera has a rapid onset beginning uh, with abdominal fullness and discomfort, rushes of peristalsis and loose stool. Vomiting may also occur. The stools quickly uh, become watery, voluminous, uh, almost odorless and contain mucus flecks, giving it an appearance uh, called rice water stools. Neither white blood cells or blood are present in the stools, and the patient is uh, febrile. Clinical features of cholera result from the extensive fluid loss and electrolyte imbalance, uh, which can lead to extreme dehydration and hypotension. The death within hours if untreated. Diagnosis. The initial uh, suspicion of cholera depends on recognition of typical clinical features in an appropriate epidemiological setting. A bacteriologic diagnosis is accomplished by isolation of Vibrio cholera from stool. The organism grows on common clinical laboratory media such as blood agar and McConkie agar, but it is isolated uh, isolation is enhanced by the use of selective media of thiosulfate, citrate, bile salt, uh, sucrose agar. Once isolated, the organism is uh, readily identified by biochemical reactions. Outside cholera uh, endemic areas, the selective medium is not routinely used for stool cultures. Uh, so clinical laboratories must be altered to the uh, suspicion of cholera. Treatment. The outcome of cholera is dependent on balancing the diarrheal fluid and ionic losses with uh, adequate fluid and electrolyte replacement. This is accomplished by oral and intravenous administration of solution of glucose with uh, near uh, physiological uh, concentrations of sodium and chloride and higher uh, then physiologic concentrations of potassium and bicarbonate. Exact fo uh, formulas are available uh, as uh, dried packets to which a given volume of water is added. 
or a replacement particularly if begin early is sufficient uh, for all but the most severe cases and has substantially reduced the mortality for from cholera antimicrobial therapy uh, plays a secondary role uh, to fluid replacement tetracycline shortens the duration of diarrhea and magnitude of uh, fluid loss uh, try a methoprim sulfo uh, meth uh, sulfo meth oxol and erythromycin are alternatives uh, for the use in children and pregnant women prevention uh, epidemic cholera uh, a disease of poor sanitation uh, does not uh, persist when treatment or disposal of human waste is adequate because good sanitary conditions uh, do not exist uh, in much of the world secondary uh, local measures uh, such as boiling or chlorination of water during ep uh, epidemics are required the cases associated with uh, crustaceans can be prevented by adequate cooking up to 10 minutes and avoidance uh, of recontamination from containers and surfaces vaccine uh, prepared from whole cells lipopolysaccharide and ctb subunit have been disappointing proving protection that is not long lasting current interest include uh, live attenuated vaccine strains because of the potential to uh, stimulate local siga immune response now coming on to the mcqs the cholera is caused by bacterium virus fungi or uh, fungus or protozoa the correct answer is protozoa the most common characteristic uh, symptoms of cholera is high fever watery diarrhea headache or persistent cough the correct answer is watery diarrhea cholera is caused through uh, through contaminated water through the cough droplets from the infected person bite of a female culex mosquito or none of the above the correct answer is uh, through contaminated water treatment with oral dehydration solution may be sufficient to treat a person with mild degree of cholera true or false it is true so the uh, treatment with oral dehydration solution may be sufficient to treat a person with mild degree of cholera oral cholera vaccine provide lifelong immunity mm. true or false that is false because oral vaccine uh, have not been proven to be uh, very much reliable in the long term of cholera and their effect is very short very short duration of time uh, they are effective signs of dehydration include dry skin high bp uh, raised of uh, pontalanes in children or all the above the correct answer is dry skin the stool of cholera patient resembles uh, and kobe sauce rice water apple jelly none of the above the correct answer is rice water intake of uh, raw oysters has been associated with cholera true or false it's true because cholera cases uh, are caused because uh, more, majority of cases are caused because of uncooked uh, seafood right there are two significant causes of cholera uh one is uh, uncooked marine or uh, marine uh, eat, food eating or seafood eating and another is uh, contaminated drinking water people at risk of developing cholera include people with low immunity people with blood group a young adults none of the above the correct answer is people with low immunity 
Vibrio cholera is the motile bacteria which belongs to the group of uh, Lophortrichus, uh, Peritrichus, Monotrichus, and Ampheritrichus. The correct answer is Monotrichus. These are the references from where we have collected the material. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture.